Hello there, my fellow loyalist secret agents of the Hydra, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Primarch's lore. This time, part 3 from my coverage of Alpharius Omegon. In the last two episodes, we mostly focused on the origins, so to speak, of Alpharius, and then we talked about the Alpha Legion's way of waging war, and the dislike that they accrued from pretty much everyone else around them. Today, we are going to get started on Alpharius' involvement in the Horus Heresy, and the first major couple of engagements of the Alpha Legion in this conflict. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? It has long been theorized that since Alpharius was only familiar with one other Primarch, namely Horus, it was self-explanatory why he chose that side at the onset of the Horus heresy. Indeed, the very plan at Istvan V, where Horus destroyed most of the Iron Hands, the Raven Guard and the Salamanders in a massive ambush, was very reminiscent of plans that Alpharius had created in the past. However, it is possible that there is another reason entirely for Alpharius leading his legion to the side of the traitors, a secret known only inside of the 20th. Approximately two years before the beginning of the heresy, during the so-called Compliance of Nerf, Alpharius Omegon was apparently contacted by members of a Xenos organization led by the Eldar, but comprising an alliance of individuals drawn from many races, called the Cabal. These shady characters brought to him visions of an impending civil war within the Imperium, and expanded knowledge of the nature and designs of the ruinous powers of chaos. It is believed that this Cabal convinced Alpharius Omegon that the only way to permanently defeat chaos in the galaxy was to ensure that Horus was victorious in his rebellion against the Emperor. It is perhaps for this reason that Alpharius Omegon, secretly loyal to the Imperium and the Emperor, may have chosen to join the traitors who have given their souls to chaos. The Cabal, through its only known human agent at the time, the perpetual John Grammaticus, explained that they had foreseen two possible outcomes to the coming heresy. The first vision had the Alpha Legion remaining loyal to the Emperor and fighting against Horus, thus ending in the Emperor's victory. However, the Emperor would be gravely wounded and entombed inside the cybernetic sarcophagus of the Golden Throne, neither alive nor dead and no longer able to guide humanity. Ten millennia would pass, and the Imperium would be fated to slowly decay, until ultimately chaos would return and defeat the Imperium, condemning humanity to eventual extinction. The second outcome had the Alpha Legion joining forces with Horus and Chaos Undivided, and fighting the Emperor. In this vision, Horus was victorious and he killed the Emperor. The traitor legions would defeat the loyalists and Terra would now belong to Horus, now the greatest ever servant of chaos. The vision continued with Horus, after killing his father, shocked into sanity by his conscience and violently freed from chaos's corruption over him. Disgusted with himself and loathing what he had become, Horus would seek to exterminate the chaos-corrupted human race in a vast orgy of bloodshed that would consume the Imperium in a single century. Though humanity would become extinct, the Chaos powers would also be destroyed by the destruction of humanity, since ultimately their existence largely depended upon the collective psychic emanations of humanity inside the warp. The Alpha Legion decided to join Horus's rebellion, and made the decision that they believed the Emperor would have also made, to sacrifice humanity for the ultimate eradication of chaos from the universe. Yet their sacrifice seems to have been made in vain, as Horus did not find victory, and the Imperium persevered, despite the Alpha Legion's decision to support chaos. This can only lead one to wonder if the Cabal and their predictions were wrong, if the Cabal secretly served the interests of Chaos and was lying to Alpharius, simply to corrupt yet another Astartes Legion. 
Of course, there could be a third or fourth or fifth answer involving something as of yet undiscovered. The actions of the twin Primarchs during the Horus Heresy are vague to say the very least. Like other legions, and especially the Word Bearers, the many encounters with the Alpha Legion across several sectors and segmente revealed that the 20th Legion had secretly built up their power, and was acting on multiple levels and in different war zones. It would be then logical to assume that both Primarchs would increasingly operate with different agendas. When the Horus Heresy erupted and the atrocity at Istvan III occurred, a large Alpha Legion strike force, comprising some 50,000 legionaries, under the direct command of their Primarch, were conveniently situated to respond to Rogel Dorn's order to attack the traitors at Istvan V. This Alpha Legion contingent is believed to have been comprised the combined forces of two separate expeditionary fleets and their support vessels. All of these had recently returned to the Imperium to resupply and rearm at the Forge World of Lucius after an extended series of campaigns in the northeastern galactic fringe. The Alpha Legion and their Primarch had been supposedly all but out of contact with the rest of the Imperium for several standard years. And by this fact was Rogel Dorn, Praetorian of Terra, likely assured of their loyalty and lack of involvement with whatever madness had befallen Horus and his immediate lackeys. This could not, however, have been any further from the truth as their involvement at the Dropside Massacre was to prove, and there have been even unsubstantiated claims since that Alpharius himself had designed the planning of the Dropside Massacre. It is certain that the Alpha Legion had spread its web of infiltration, espionage and sabotage far and wide through the Imperium prior to the outbreak of hostilities. This was soon to be proven to bloody effect on a score of worlds as part of the Warmaster's opening gambit. At the hands of the Alpha Legion's talent for conspiracy and that of their agents, billions were to die, and many billions more would suffer hardship and disaster in the time to come. Even on planets that would not feel the thunderous footfall of the Legionis Astartes throughout the entire Civil War, would the Alpha Legion's cruel plans and machinations wreak untold havoc. However, even as Horus unleashed the Alpha Legion to bury its fangs deep into the body of the Imperium, he neither trusted it nor its master to obey him, nor fight the war he wished them to fight once the Hydra had been unleashed. History would prove this distrust to have been very well founded. Following the Dropsite Massacre on Istvan V, the mysterious Cabal sought to utilize the Alpha Legion in order to ensure Horus a swift victory. Following the calamitous events at Istvan V and the Raven Guard's flight to Terra to bring word of the disaster, the shattered 19th Legion returned to their homeworld of Deliverance. Unknown to them, the insidious Alpha Legion had inserted multiple operatives into the Raven Guard, surgically altered to look as Raven Guard legionaries who had died on the Black Sands of Istvan V. They gathered intelligence on the Primarch Korax's efforts to reconstitute the Legion utilizing a sample of pure, undifferentiated Primarch DNA given to him by the Emperor himself. The Alpha Legion operatives patiently waited until the Raven Guard had achieved a genetic breakthrough and developed a new accelerated gene seed protocol. In the meantime, they fomented rebellion among the old tech guilds of Kiavar, the forge world that the Moon of Deliverance circled, while also assembling Alpha Legion forces nearby for an unsuspected surgical strike. The Alpha Legion successfully tainted the pure Primarch DNA, which resulted in the disastrous mutation of newly inducted Raven Guard aspirants into hideously transformed monstrous creatures. At the same time, the plans of the Alpha Legion were reaching their climax. The Kiavar Rebellion was well underway, supported by the newly arrived Alpha Legion forces, who had been camouflaged to look as Raven Guard. The Loyalist Raven Guard successfully put down the rebellion and killed all the Alpha Legion operatives, but the damage to their attempts at remaking the Legion had been done. 
In the aftermath of this successful operation, Alpharius was forced to hand over the research data obtained from the pure Primarch DNA to the Emperor's children chief mad scientist, I mean apothecary, Fabius, for more research. Unknown to Fabius, however, the data was practically useless, and was incomplete at the very best. The Alpha Legion ensured that it kept the integral data for themselves, as well as a copy of the corrupted genome. Alpharius wanted to utilize this valuable data to raise his legion above all the others. Following this action, Omegon met with a Cabal representative aboard his own ship. After a terse exchange, the twin Primarch departed, informing the Cabal that the 20th Legion would now fulfill its duties on its own, without any further external influence. Next, Alpharius would dispatch his forces in an attempt to blockade the White Scars from leaving the Chondak system and joining the Loyalist forces. The White Scars were only becoming aware of the larger galaxy-wide conflict of the Horus Heresy when Omegon initiated a mission to destroy Tenebrae 9-50, an asteroid facility that was being used by the Alpha Legion as a garrison and as a science facility. This facility had been utilizing a pylon array in order to jam any communications so that the White Scars would remain ignorant of the Warmaster's rebellion. Omegon dispatched an Alpha Legion team led by Sheed Ranko on a one-way suicide mission to destroy the facility. It was later believed that the Alpha Legion possibly fabricated the claim that it was leaking information to their enemies and had therefore become a liability. After the destruction of Tenebrae 9-50, the becalmed warp became sedated, allowing the White Scars to finally receive word of Horus's rebellion. As the White Scars Armada made preparations to depart the Chondak system, they encountered a massive Alpha Legion fleet. The Alpha Legion was an unknown quantity to the White Scars. They didn't respond to hails and had hung back at the edge of the system, silently accumulating more warships across a wide sweep of local space. There was no response from the 20th Legion's command, despite all the queries made by the Khan. All White Scars vessels were ordered not to escalate the situation and not to fire upon the interlopers unless fired upon. The warriors of the 5th Legion were to maintain perimeter integrity and not permit the Alpha Legion spacecraft to penetrate within range of the core White Scars fleet. After a short time, Jagatai ordered his fleet to prepare for immediate departure. As the White Scars vessels began to move, the Alpha Legion reacted. They maintained the integrity of the cordon, warding the routes to the nearest suitable jump point and keeping the White Scars corralled within the vicinity of Chondax. Utilizing the superior drives of their vessels, the White Scars suddenly switched from an aimless drift pattern into an arrowhead shock assault of astonishing precision. Not even the 20th Legion could hope to match the sheer speed and void skills of the Scars, so in this case they partially failed in their objective to keeping the White Scars corralled. Though both sides engaged one another, the White Scars made good their escape, and after a long and perilous journey, which I described in my Jagatai Khan miniseries, they eventually joined their loyalist brothers back on Terra. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about Alpharius Omegon and the role of the Alpha Legion in the early stages of the Horus Heresy. We are far from done with them, though, as in the next episode I do intend to talk about the Battle of the Alaxis Nebula and the so-called Pluto Campaign, possibly even beyond that. What are your thoughts on this pivotal moment with the Cabal that decided which side the Alpha Legion would join? Do you think they made the right choice? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all a peaceful day. The Emperor Protects.